clean energy is definitively the future, and this is one of the great ways to get diversified exposure. First off, read this disclaimer carefully. We are going into the energy sector. If we look at the average performance uh, from the 52 week low here, it is massively outperforming the total world stock index. However, it is quite some distance from the 52 week highs. The best performing is global clean energy. Uh, from the 52 week highs, that is, and that one is from iShares. I C L N is the ticker. Okay, uh, let's jump. Let's first look at the seasonality. So, this is uh, from 2009 to 2020. Very interestingly, you can see that June and J July, especially July, is a very strong month for this ETF. As a matter of fact, it is one of the strongest months, uh, it is in third place. Only January and March is, are stronger, that's very good. If we change the data a bit, still it is a very 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 strong month. Okay, so that's bullish. So that's helped, that helps the bullish case. Uh, let's explore this one further. Okay. These are weekly data points. This is this is this is literally all the data we get for this ETF. You can see that it absolutely unraveled after it went public. Huge pullback. Uh, but you know, it, the the timing of it going public was kind of uh, not that good. It was like literally during the financial crisis. Uh, this one interestingly found its low here in uh, 2012. Let's measure the performance to the recent high. To the recent high, it is 100, 126%. So the interesting thing that happened is that you, here you have the bears in control, and here you have this consolidation phase. And now we are very much trying to do a full bore breakout. The key resistance level from the past is definitely this one. You of course have this one as well but getting above this one would be very meaningful. You can make a case that we have a rounding bottom pattern here, which is very, very interesting. Um, this is kind of a cup and handle. You could say that this is the handle. It's a very differently looking handle that what we, than what we are used to, but the bigger picture is that we have a very interesting uh, charting pattern that tends to be bullish. You could make the case that um, we are getting this uh, entire sector, a subsector, at a very cheap price. Because if you think about the future growth rate for clean energy, it is tremendous. And that's something we will explore pretty soon. Because that's something you always should think about. What is the future prospects? Is this industry in decline or will it rise? RSI is in neutral zone. The accumulation distribution line shows that there's been heavy uh, increase in buying. That's very, very good. The move from the low here is actually very, very impressive. If you measure from here to the recent uh, high, that's 60%. That's very impressive. Very strong trend, a sharp V-shaped uh, recovery. Uh, we have recently seen a bit weakness in the overall market. Uh, in this candlestick for previous week was a bit uh, nasty. Uh, the bulls, also when it comes to the S&P 500, they are fighting back. If you look at the correlation, you can see that there is an 80% correlation with the S&P 500. That is a rather strong correlation. So even though there are all kinds of... Uh, support for this industry, even if things get rough, um, it does, of, does depend on, well, the prospects of the industry is interconnected with the health of the overall global economy. Hence, you do get this correlation. Okay, so let's jump to the daily data points, because the moves have, have been so sharp that uh, this gives us more nuance. A key moving average to watch out for is this uh, purple 20 day moving average. It's a component in many technical indicators. Support, support, support. Uh, 
uh, kind of support here as well, even though we have been slipping below it. We are finding resistance, resistance at the 5-day moving average, quite surgical resistance. Uh, so even though we are seeing the bulls fight back, it is a bit unfortunate to, to struggle with such um, a short-term moving average like the 5-day. However, you could make the case that um, given that we were this significantly overbought, the RSI was very stretched, this pullback must, must be viewed in that context. We were very much due a pullback. There are many key support levels uh, here below us. We are close to getting a golden cross, with the 50-day crossing above the 200-day moving average. The value of that cross is muted, or at least reduced, because of the very recent death cross. Because when you have these indicators triggering, you know, right after each other in such a, you know, um, it means that the algorithms and, you know, the human analysts, they are going to weight this less. Okay, but all in all, uh, this is, this is uh, a very interesting industry with huge uh, growth potential. On the weekly data points, we do have a bit of a cup and handle-ish uh, pattern. We are very far away from uh, the highs, and uh, yeah, let's continue to explore a bit. You can see here that you are paid a dividend for waiting, 1.31%. Uh, Not a huge dividend, but at least there's uh, there's some. Options are available, meaning if you have a bullish position, you can also protect it with the puts and other option strategies. Some decent performance, it is up year to date, 4%, that's pretty good, 18% over the last year. If you look a bit here under the hood, you can see that, that the expense ratio is 0.46%, that's not, not nothing to really complain about. Um, let's uh, do some uh, other, yeah, the PE, 20. Uh, here it is compared to the, the pair group. Let's look at what L and R is. That's the uranium nuclear energy. That's a bit more specific. Then you have the Invesco Clean Global Clean Energy ETF, which has a way uh, higher PE. And here we can see a dividend. The ILCO has a higher dividend. Yeah, that's the Yield Co. and Renewable Energy Income ETF. I mean, the, the dividend is higher, so if you really are into dividends, then this is something to look a bit at. Uh, let's take a look at the holdings. Here we can get some uh, some breakdown. So 31 number of holdings, uh, not that much. 47% uh, of the assets are in the top 10. Uh, the vast majority, of course, is in uh, stocks. When it comes to the... Um, I mean, the sector breakdown, it can be, uh, yeah, yeah, whether you categorize something as tech, industrials, or utilities, or uh, even energy, it is a bit difficult to define. But generally speaking, I do categorize this as, as energy, I mean, you know, the entire ETF. Here you can see the market cap, a very nice balance here, that's nice to see. As far as the regional breakdown, uh, you, can see, you can see that uh, there's some decent balance here as well. Yeah, uh, let's uh, look a bit at the energy uh, sector. So introduction. Uh, I did put uh, this in, uh, in two primary categories. You have, of course, the non-renewables, -renew you got fossil fuels and, uh, you know, uh, those, you know, the bad ones. And then you have, of course, the renewables. Within the renewables, I like to operate with two subcategories, something I call alternative energy, and that's uh, uh, stuff like uranium, um, uh, wind energy, uh, biomass. Uh, these are alternative energy sources, but they're not, in, ne not necessarily uh, good for the environment, at least from a more holistic perspective. That's why I have this other other category, which I call eco-friendly energy. So these are energy sources that, from a more holistic perspective, are good for our planet. We are talking about solar energy, as an example, geothermals, um, hydropower, those that are like from a more 
bigger picture perspective, good. And I'm more bullish on the eco-friendly energies than the alternative energies. Uh, let's look at energy consumption in 2020, uh, 2018 I mean. You can see that uh, the fossil fuels are still dominating, 27% uh, coal, 34 oil, and 24% gas. It's a pretty, pretty sizable. Um, the thing is that these are in... Uh, well, they, they don't have a very uh, pretty future. Um, they are hated, and there's tons of pressure focused on crushing these industries. Hence, that is quite clearly bearish. Only 15% of global energy consumption is from renewables. A minuscule 1% solar, 2% wind, 7% hydropower, 4.4% nuclear, and 1% are like others. This, of, this means that there is... If you look at where these are today, especially solar, and when they, where they will be in the future, there is tremendous growth potential. I mean, and when you think about 15% uh, currently from renewables, the, the, the current price level for ETFs like ICLN is very low compared to where it will be in the future, meaning there is huge growth potential. Here, these are hated industries, people want to see them destroyed, there will, of course, be trading opportunities, but long-term, very bad. Here, long-term, very, very promising. Interestingly, China is actually the number one investor in renewable energy. So that's something to, something to think about. Especially if you want to look at uh, uh, investing opportunities in specific companies. Given that China's economy uh, political economy is very different from what we have in the West, it means that uh, the companies in this space that are ADRs, you know, uh, tradable on Western exchanges, uh, they have uh, a lot of support, meaning the Chinese government will never allow them to go bankrupt. And that is of course uh, very beneficial for, uh, uh, for us investors. Uh, you could make a strong case that the Chinese uh, political and economic system is uh, especially suited for the transition to global, uh, to clean energy. While we in the West are waiting for, you know, the invisible hand of the market to uh, solve this problem, which is a very passive approach, we see this very active approach um, from uh, China and neighboring countries, and that is something we have to watch out for, because um, the, the, com the companies that will dominate in this industry, they will uh, become very huge and very powerful. Which is why I am so bullish on this. US 500. Okay, let's now look at the S&P 500 futures. Yeah, daily data points. Um, yesterday was a very fascinating day in um, the market. This day we were way down and then we closed quite dramatically higher. This was a massive, massive uh, reversal. Today, so far, we are seeing some uh, bounce. Though, we do have the, the issue that the current level of the market is very much disconnected from economic uh, realities. Long term, that doesn't work out. I, I think that at this point there are far too many uh, of the experts in the market that are bearish, uh, at least expecting some correction. So you gotta ask yourself the question, are all, are you know, this vast majority of the experts, are they incorrect? Um, or is the market incorrect? My personal opinion on this market is that um, it doesn't make sense that we have the longest uh, bull market, then the shortest uh, bear market, and then we have uh, you know this new bull market here. It is fully possible that uh, we could have a very different kind of market, meaning a super short bear, 
But maybe even we have a sh super short pull. Uh, the only thing I know for sure is that the market has completely changed its uh, psychology. If you look long term here, let's look really long term. Really long term, okay. Here we go all the way back here to the year 2000. You can see that this is a more normal market. There are moves, but they're not that big. Here you can see that there's been a very dramatic change. Extreme sell-off, extreme rally. The Meaning the market is really struggling to find the right price. There's been a disturbance in the force. And as long as the market behaves like this, with these extreme moves up, up and down, you have to be, just be very, very careful. Because the reality is that many bears have gotten beaten and many bulls have gotten beaten. So don't be fooled by all, you know, the success stories you hear all over the place because when investors and traders talk about uh, their trade trading, they will focus, of course, on their successes. You will not hear about um, the losses. Whatever you do, of course, let the trend be your friend. And may the trend be with you.